in this channel, uh, sometimes I invite some important people who have important um, program, educational program, or some people who have important information. I invite them to, to talk on my video. Uh, as you know, like um, in last year, during the Corona time, for example, one psychologist, she talked about uh, the importance of psychology, psychological treatment and counseling in this um, Corona time. And then we have also other uh, contributors in my YouTube program. Today, I have Dr. Fisha Aftamara. He is the former founder and owner of Unit University. And then um, he moved to United States and he stayed in the United States for a while. And then he, he, he saw the situation of black people in the United States. As you know, there is a movement of black life movement. There was also a civil liberty movement for many years. And then uh, there were the changes by the, by the contribution of like Martin Luther King and other civil rights movement leaders. But still, there is a lot of things to do in, 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 in the field of politics. And then uh, Dr. Fisher saw more the importance of in economic transformation of empowerment of black people. That's why he has a, a new project now. So today he's going to tell us the purpose of and then the mission of the project he, he, he founded with the other founders. Uh, the, the, the name of this project is Purpose Black Ethiopia. So now I let him talk about this project and to introduce himself about his background and his, uh, his future uh, career and the professional goal. Thank you, Otto Marcos, for giving me the opportunity to make, uh, you know, to prepare this, uh, you know, uh, interview and uh, for giving us the opportunity uh, to let our project, uh, uh, people know um, uh, this about this project. Uh, to, to, to introduce myself, my name is uh, uh, Fisa Haptamari, and uh, my background is, um, I'm trained as a physician, and my background is health. Uh, I used to teach at Addis Ababa University, but later on, I uh, founded my own university called Private and uh, Unity University. It's the first uh, private university in Ethiopia. It started as a modest language uh, um, institution in Ethiopia at a time when there weren't many uh, higher uh, uh, educational, private higher educational institutions in the country. And um, we were very fortunate enough. Uh, although there was a lot, uh, there were a lot, a lot of challenges, uh, we were able to, uh, you know, succeed in making it the first uh, fully accredited private university in Ethiopia. Um, uh, during that time, you know, uh, as you remember, there, there was a lot of, uh, uh, there were very limited uh, private public higher institutions in the country. So a lot of Ethiopians who graduated from high schools did not have the opportunity to pursue higher education. So um, the coming of uh, Unity uh, created a lot of opportunity for people to, you know, um, get degrees uh, and, and also uh, pursue higher education. And uh, as a result of that one, they were able to, you know, um, change uh, their lives uh, economically and uh, being able to you know um, go to higher levels in, in in various positions be it privately or in government institutions so that was the opportunity that we created and um, we were able to graduate more tens of thousands of students and uh, besides the educational um, activities we were involved in uh, a lot of social endeavors and also research and uh, many activities so um, uh, we were also very active in providing scholarship opportunities for uh, especially girls who uh, used to come from very poor, uh, you know, uh, um, families. And as a result of that project, we were able, we were really able to impact the lives of a lot of uh, young women in the country. So Unity had contributed a lot in that area. So that was, uh, you know, in terms of uh, my background, in terms of what I have done with regards to Unity University. But about uh, 11 years ago, I left uh, Ethiopia for various reasons and came to the United States. And uh, as any other, uh, you know, um, uh, Ethiopians who, uh, who, who are living abroad, we are subjected to, uh, you know, who are, and we are also first-hand witnesses of what's happening to Black people all over the world. So uh, being black person, you know, you 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 you're always, uh, you know, um, ask a question as to for how long this thing is uh, should continue, 
and uh, really one thing led to another. You know, uh, uh, you know, some of us who really uh, thought that this thing uh, should be changed, we said that why don't we do something about it? And uh, we came up with this idea of uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, if we really want to make a change, a difference. Then we really have to find what are the root causes, root causes of this, you know, long-lasting uh, uh, problems of black people all over the world. I mean, you have you have seen it, uh, the situation of racism now. It's, it's become even worse now, uh, despite all the struggles that have been taking place for the last many years. I mean, it's a civil rights movement, and also the uh, the uh, Black Lives Matter, which is uh, you know happening right right now. But despite what's going on, besides what people have been trying and the, the struggle and you know the effort that's being that is being made, you know the improvement in terms of uh, you know blacks being accepted with the global economic system, the racism as well as you know the, the economic situation overall is not improving. So uh, you know we really have to do something about it because. Trying the same thing and expecting a different result is not something, you know, <laughs> which is advisable. So we said we really have to really uh, look into the situation and we have to find, you know, um, an alternative solution to what has been taking place. Because what we have done so far has not really materialized or really uh, leading to uh, helping us into achieving what we really wanted to achieve. So what we did was that, you know, we really started uh, looking into the situation and we came up with three important things that needs to be changed. The first one is the, uh, you know, the effort that we are ma- trying to make in terms of trying to find solutions to address our problems, mostly it focuses on politics. So rather than focusing on politics, we say that why don't we focus on economics? Because time and again, our observations show that, you know, societies who really focused on economic empowerment or economic development, they've been able to trans- transform themselves. And as a result, their acceptance, acceptance throughout the world has really increased and they have really become very influential globally. You can look at countries like China, countries like Israel, and many countries in Europe, you've seen them. The minute they transform themselves economically, they not only solve their, their own problems, economic and social problems, but most importantly, they become influential globally. So essentially, that's the avenue that we should follow. So this is really what we decide we need to do. So we say that okay, let's come up with something, you know, an endeavor that really focuses on, or a company that really focuses on providing economic solutions to addressing the economic problems of black people all over the world. So we founded the company called Black Economy Excellence about a year and four months ago. So the whole idea is to find economic models that would help transform economic uh, the, uh, you know, the black communities all over the world. And as a result, you know, uh, increase, uh, I mean, reintegrate blacks into the global economic system and also consequently, you know, um, increase the uh, influence of black people all over the world, as well as, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, respect uh, of black people all over the world. So this is all intention. And uh, besides that one, we really wanted to resolve this uh, black mentality, which is a victim mentality, and, uh, and you know, sitting and complaining and others uh, looking for others or waiting for others to give us uh, solutions to us. We said that we need to mobilize people so that we need to have confidence on ourselves and we should be determined that we are the ones who should be determining our own destiny. So uh, instead of looking uh, for solutions outside of us, we said that we have to have an inward looking and we should be looking for solutions, our own solutions to our own problems. And the third thing that we really wanted to change is the, this again, it's, it's also related to the mindset of black people globally, which is the acceptance of poverty. We said that we are poor, black people all over the world, you know, and we have accepted that. And um, that's really totally wrong. We black people are not by any means poor. We may not have used our resources for various reasons, some of them be it, uh, because of ourselves and some of them because of external influence, but by, we are not by no means uh, poor. Black people have all the natural resources that we can think of. Some of them 100% belong to the black people. And uh, you know the, 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 the number of black people all over the world is 1.3 billion people all over the world. That is, it's a resource that we can, we can use. So essentially, we have what it takes, uh, you know, um, uh, to uh, 
develop ourselves economically. So the issue is, can we come up with a model? And uh, once coming, after coming up with a model, will we have the willingness to work together to change the, you know, the prevailing situation? So we said, uh, let's start doing it. And that's why we founded uh, this uh, Black Economy Excellence. So once we have, by the way, it's established in, the, in, in Maryland, as a, a public benefit corporation. And the once that uh, company has been established, the, the first thing that we did is we started to really study the current, what's you know, the, the situation, the economic situation in terms of, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, affecting the black people globally. So essentially what we have uh, concluded is that, you know, the way that the world uh, order, the world economic system is designed, is, is, is not favoring the black people at all. There is only unidirectional, uh, you know, uh, uh, money flow, whereby, you know, because all the uh, big corporations and all the companies that are providing, you know, uh, big companies that are providing services and products uh, belong to the, uh, the whites and also the Asians and, and so forth, uh, you know, we're, we're forced uh, to always, you know, uh, give whatever money we get to, the, to those companies. So essentially it's the outward uh, flow of money instead of anything coming to us. So unless we are able to change or reverse this situation or we are able to create an alternative to these kinds of situations, Black will always continue to be dependent on others for their livelihood and as a result, you know, they will not have any influence. So essentially what we said that we need to come up with a model that would, that would either reverse the situation or at least create an alternative to it. So what we did is we designed the model, we call that model Global Collective Perpetual Wealth Generation Model, which in effect is in a, an attempt to create some some very big, you know, uh, global corporations which would be you know, competing for the existing corporations. And then as a result, you know, we, these companies will not be only serving the black communities, but also uh, at the same time, will also be competing in the global market and will try to reverse, you know, to bring about an inward flow of money into the, the, to the black community. And as a result, you know, we we'll start to grow economically. So this is a model that we created. And uh, as uh, now in an effort to implement this one, then we started thinking of how can we get into, you know, uh, you know get this thing into action. And as a result, you know, we, we, we said that, you know, the best way for us to get into it is by, you know, uh, getting into technology because whether we like it or not, right now, uh, we live in a digital age. We need the technology age. So if we really want to do something which would really, uh, we can start that with a minimal investment and also which we can easily scale so that we can serve large chunks of our population, we said that we should be focusing on, on, on uh, technology. So we, came, we created a company called Purpose Black. The whole idea is to uh, have uh, any, you know, the company that would be uh, in the, you know, uh, endeavoring in the area of technology, coming up, uh, you know, on identifying models and solutions that would, you know, uh, create, provide um, um, services to the black community. So. Uh, we created this purpose block. So once this company has been established, essentially what we did was that, we, as you can imagine, there are many models that we should be looking into. Uh, and we started looking into, uh, and, you know, analyzing these various models. And uh, essentially what we did, uh, what we picked up is a model called Marketplace. So a marketplace is something, a technology platform whereby, you know, uh, you use technology and you, you connect, uh, you know, sellers with buyers directly by eliminating middlemen and so forth. This is a model which has created some of the biggest corporations globally. Uh, in particular, for instance, you can take Amazon, you can take Alibaba, you can take Uber and so forth. So we said that it's better if you can use this kind of model. So what we did was uh, essentially uh, wanted uh, uh, chose this model and then in 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 in, in the next step we did also how we can apply this model we have to pick uh, first of all the location where we should be applying and secondly uh, you know uh, adapt this model in a in in in, um, in a way that it would be beneficial to uh, the large uh, you know uh, population uh, black population so essentially in terms of trying to identify location essentially because we wanted to really uh, serve, uh, you know, uh, one billion people through our projects, 
uh, what we uh, uh, went into is to what we picked up is that you know what we decided was that this project should be in Ethiopia and in Africa because that's where the majority of black people live and um, uh, you know if we really want to impact black people economically large numbers of black people economically so we said that uh, you know this model has to be uh, really a model that should be you know um, linked to farmers because the majority of black people uh, you know are either farmers or uh, their livelihood is related to farming so essentially we linked up this project with with with, with farmers and then as a you know uh, 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 marketplace model. If it starts with farmers, then it ends the end is going to be the consumers uh, because it's essentially connecting the farmers with the consumers. And in the process, what we did is that we really looked into what's happening as a situation uh, in Africa. Essentially, it's a system which is either uh, not developed or it's a system which is controlled by you know middlemen who you know manipulate it in any way they like. So essentially, we, what we try to do is we, to, to reverse the situation. So what we did is essentially, you know, what we try to do is we identified all the critical elements of this entire end-to-end -end system. We call it end-to-end uh, -end product to consumer. So essentially, what we did is starting from the beginning, which is with, with, the, with the farmers, there are things that we should be doing, which is like farmers need help because essentially what's happening, what really kept them in poverty is because most of them, almost all of them, are you know, doing subsistence farming. Subsistence farming is nothing but they do farming just for survival. That's what it means. Unless we create this, uh, we change the situation, we are not be able to change the lives of people. So essentially what happens is instead of subsistence farming, what we wanted to change is to change it with contract farming. By contract farming, essentially farmers, uh, uh, you know, looking what they are doing as a business, not as just a mere survival, you know, thing. So essentially we give contract to farmers and then we provide them whatever su supports and services they need so that they can fulfill their contracts. And once, you know, they fulfill their contracts, essentially we said that we have to change the situation whereby, you know, only raw materials are, are, be, are, are sold. So essentially what we did is uh, the raw materials will be collected and they will be processed and value will be added and then through the system the system has to be fully integrated in such a way that we also should be managing the the distribution whereby you know there will not be middlemen in the in the process and then from the farmer until it reaches the consumer it will be a system which will be owned by the shareholders which are the owners the farmers and the consumers themselves so we're trying to create a social enterprise company and uh, as a model the first uh, uh, project would be uh, we decided would be launched in Ethiopia. So we, what we did is we, uh, we decided to create a company called Purpose Black Ethiopia Share Company, and uh, the whole idea is to implement whatever I told you uh, so far, uh, fully implemented in Ethiopia as an example, and eventually replicate the model throughout Africa and globally. So this is what we we uh, started to do. So once we decided this one, now we know exactly, as you can see, you know, we have this uh, Purpose Black Ethiopia and then the mother company is Black Economy Excellence and Purpose Black Global. This is not merely business. It has a big vision. It has a big mission. So it, it's, it's a very big, big thing. You know, it's not like, just like any other ordinary business for us. So what we did is, um, you know, uh, this is, you know, it's, it has a very big historic significance also. So essentially, we uh, what we did is like, you know, uh, when, uh, you know, we went to Ethiopia, uh, the first thing that we, uh, we, uh, we did was for, for to really to introduce this thing to, uh, you know, the officials uh, in the country so that they comprehend and understand the significance of this, this project. So uh, we really went around and started presenting the project to the officials. And then they really understood it. And then they, uh, you know, we entered the uh, memorandum of understanding with many organizations, we established the council. And then once we did that one, what we did essentially 108 people, you know, uh, you know, agreed to become founders and they, uh, they, they paid the, you know, the contributions. And then the company was fully registered and established and we set up an office in Addis and as well as a uh, headquarters in Walaita Soto. 
And then, uh, you know, we started employing people. And now we have, uh, you know, started the floated shares for people to, to buy shares from this company. The only idea is to raise 10 billion Ethiopian book, which is about $200. And then uh, um, to allocate this money for the awareness of this model, uh, we are allocating 1.5 uh, billion uh, Ethiopian book for uh, projects that would be um, supporting farmers. Uh, 3 billion will be uh, allocated to the uh, agro processing you know, uh, uh, complex, uh, 5 billion per will be allocated for the distribution, whereby we're going to be having one, uh, almost 1,000 distribution um, channels all over the country. And then uh, 500 million will be uh, distributed, uh, allocated for uh, the e-commerce. So essentially end to end, you know, this money will be uh, distributed and, uh, you know, implemented like that. And in the process, what's going to happen is, we're going to be uh, helping the farmers to, uh, you know, uh, 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 grow economically. Uh, we're going to be creating a lot of job opportunity for the unemployed youth. As you can imagine, youth unemployment is one of the major problems in the country. Uh, and uh, the, the other major, uh, you know, um, significance or importance or um, relevance of this project is that, you know, Every household in Ethiopia is now is being affected by uh, you know the uh, the economic situation there, especially you know the price of commodities in the country. It's exorbitant. It's it's really hard to imagine how people are suffering these days. So essentially, you know, by providing them uh, and supplying them with uh, products at a very very reasonable price, you know, you can really significantly um, you know um, relieve. Uh, the people of their, uh, you know, uh, economic situation there. Uh, and the other uh, significance is going to be eventually, you know, we'll be exporting uh, products because we have a lot of, pro you know, opportunity to export products. Through that one, we'll, we will we'll be helping, helping the country by getting a lot of uh, additional uh, income uh, in foreign uh, currency. So this is a project that really uh, will have a lot of... Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, a lot of uh, help, I, a lot of um, uh, results, uh, uh, as a, a lots of uh, significance. And um, right now, uh, we have uh, we have, we have uh, even gone beyond. Like besides collecting uh, the shares, we have even started implementing this this project. Whereby last uh, Ethiopian New Year, we've been able to bring. Uh, like chicken as well as egg from the rural, from the farmers and being able to sell them to Addis, uh, in Addis to the consumers at a very, very reasonable price. So uh, to show the people that this thing can be done. So this is uh, the whole idea. So a lot of things to do. And we really want, uh, as far as the shares is con contributed, uh, uh, the share is um, uh, uh, concerned. Um, it's a very uh, affordable one. Um, the price of uh, every, I mean, uh, the par value of uh, each share is uh, 100 Ethiopian bird, which is, I don't know how, how many, how much is in dollars, like maybe uh, three dollars, four dollars, I don't know. Uh, but uh, the minimum one person can buy is uh, 1,000 Ethiopian bird, uh, which is about 20, 25 dollars. Anybody can afford it. Anybody, anybody who wants uh, really. Who he wants to help the farmers, who wants to help the unemployed youth, who really wants uh, to really contribute to the, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 to, you know, the, uh, the, to the consumers, to the buyers, uh, who wants to really help the country generating foreign currency and things like that. And in that process, you know, getting um, a dividend or getting a profit out of it, you know, for anybody who wants that. I mean, uh, there is no excuse for them because uh, it's a very affordable, uh, you know, thing that they can do. So um, essentially, that's why we're saying that every every diaspora has to be part of uh, a shareholder of uh, uh, Black um, Purpose Black uh, Ethiopia. So um, this is what we are doing. There is a lot of other things that we 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 are planning to do. Besides, you know, the share mobilization. Besides uh, implementing this project as a whole. We are also trying to bring in other uh, stakeholders into the process, uh, like international donors, uh, development organizations, wherever they may be, maybe for instance, Canada and so forth. 
Uh, we right now have appointed about 20, I think 26, uh, 24 or 26 representatives in different cities around the globe. Uh, whose responsibility is to mobilize the Ethiopians, uh, the Ethiopian diaspora and others who are interested to help or support in this project. And, uh, and because that one to look for a market for the Ethiopian products and eventually to become centers of economic excellence, you know, to by mobilizing uh, the Ethiopians and the Africans and also, uh, you know, becoming develop, um, in, in helping them engage in development process. So um, they will also be working with us and uh, helping us, uh, you know, mobilize uh, the diaspora globally and also the international community to help in the process. So there is a lot of things to do. As I, I told you, it's been only three and a half, almost four months since we started, but we have we've really accomplished uh, tremendous uh, things. And um, uh, we're looking forward uh, to really uh, um, uh, invite everybody to be a part of this exciting uh, adventure and in the process really uh, doing very impactful things for our country and eventually for the continent and uh, for the black people all over the world. So. I don't know if I took too much of your time, but essentially, I, I can't say it in brief, but essentially this is what we are doing. <laughs> Dr. Fusa, what I really like about you is you are, you, you work hard in most of your time after you graduated from as a physician and also after you finish school, not only to make a business for yourself and to increase your wealth, but also to make a difference in Ethiopia and also now in, in North America, and then we want to make a difference in the future for Black people who live all over the world, who really want to make a difference for their community and in the world. And so today I'm really honored to have you in this channel. And then I, I wish you a good, a good time in the United States and then also um, a good time in um, back home mm -hmm. when you start again, you continue to do your, this great ambitious um, work for our country and, uh, and for the world. Thank you, Marcos. The honor is ours for giving us the opportunity. As I said earlier, we want every diaspora to be a shareholder of uh, Purpose Black Ethiopia so that everybody has uh, their, their, uh, their, their um, what shall I say, their, their role within, within this process. And uh, um, it's, uh, again, uh, for, we, we really would like to thank you for giving us this opportunity. And um, whatever uh, platform we get, uh, we use it because uh, it's an opportunity for us to uh, share the message and, uh, you know, um, uh, tell people what we are doing. It's a very significant thing. It's a very impactful thing. It's a very, empower it's a very powerful thing. So, uh, you know, you're giving us that uh, voice and you're giving us that platform. So we, we thank you and uh, we commend you for what you're doing and uh, hopefully uh, you will be uh, um, uh, our uh, mouthpiece <laughs> in terms of uh, promoting this uh, this message. And uh, thank you once again for giving me the opportunity. My, I just want to let my, my viewers to know that Dr. Fisa is already popular and you have already been, you got already a cover in many media back home also, uh, including Safe Show and other um, Walter and other media and the radio. So here our aim to the, in today's interview is also to, to inform more people in Canada, uh, Eastern and Western Canada who, who, who watch my YouTube program so that they know more and then we will be sharing uh, this video and we will, we will inform this for everybody. And I, as I told you also privately, I will be participating in this project in um, as much as I can because it's, it is something I really like. And thank you again, Dr. Fisa, and uh, have a good night. Good night. Thank you, Marcos. I appreciate it.